We are on a website, a live website, and AutoGBT has taken the wheel. I'm doing absolutely nothing, and AutoGBT is doing all of the SEO work right in front of us. So AutoGPT is here. It's like ChatGPT on steroids. This thing connects to the internet, and it can crawl websites right in front of us. I'm going to show you how to do that. But first, I'm also going to show you how to install it on your computer, the real version. Okay, it's, it's, it's like a two minute tutorial. And then I'm gonna go through an actual workflow to show you how to interact with it. And I'm gonna show you how to have it jump online and crawl websites. And then after that, I'm gonna show you an alternative to what I discussed in the beginning because it can be a little complicated to install it. So if you're having any issues, there's an alternative that works pretty well too. So let's jump into it. So this is the real tool, okay? It's on GitHub, significant gravitas slash auto GPT. It's very, very robust. Us. There's a lot you can do with it. This video is going to make it simple, but I'm going to have this link in the description. This is kind of your base camp, all right? Use this as your base camp. If you have questions, you can refer to this, but let's go and actually install the thing. The first step is to open a new folder on your desktop and name that file AIAGI. Now with that complete, open the folder, click and copy the path. Now go down to your search bar and type in PowerShell right click and run as administrator once that opens type in cd and then in quotations paste the path that we copied earlier now we are going to clone the github by typing git space clone and the url provided now we're going to do two things we're going to type cd auto gpt this is going to get us to the appropriate folder and now we are going to type in pip install dash r requirements.txt. This is going to install all of the requirements for this program. Now we're going to locate the .env dash template and we're going to make a copy of it. This is in the auto GPT folder. After that, after you create a copy of it, change the file path to just .env. Now we're going to right click on the .env and open with, and you're going to locate the notepad. Click OK, and you're going to see all of the different things in this program. And this is where we type in our OpenAI key. The next step is to copy the path of the AutoGPT. You're going to come over and type CD in parentheses, AutoGPT, and then type in Python M AutoGPT. And there you have it, you're in. You get to name your AI, your own personal AI tool. So here we go, let's have some fun. Let's say the AI's name, so it's asking for a name. Let's call it the SEO agent. This is our SEO agent. It's going to act as an SEO. I'm going to ask it. It's going to be designed for keyword research, simply put. Um, and it wants a goal. So I want to um, create an article outline that is SEO optimized for a care guide on, let's say I have um, a houseplant website, which I do. So Philodendron Prince of Orange is a genus species, like a common name. It's very specific and there's good keyword. I, I already know there's good uh, volume and it's a low competition. So let's see what the AI can do with this. Let's see if it will actually go online and have some fun. How is it better? How is it worse? Let's do this experiment together. It says, I think the first step should be to conduct a Google search to gather info on this, the Philodendron Prince of Orange. Um, it says the reasoning and the plan. Good. Do it. Let's see what it does. And as you can see, it's just spitting out titles of um, websites uh, and then their URL as well. It's gathering, it's gathering, it's thinking now. It's probably going to ask us, what do you think about this? I, I, I want to do this next. Now give me, give me permission because it's always going to ask for a permission up here, enter Y to authorize, um, because all this costs money, albeit cents on the dollar. So let's see what it does. So before we get into the next part, which is crazy, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And I have a masterclass that is in development. So check out the description. There might be a coupon code there. Uh, maybe not. It depends on when you watch this video. But anyways, let's jump back into it. So it says, I think the next step should be to browse this specific website to gather more information on the care requirements of this plant. Uh, let's do it and see what happens. And here we go. We are live. We are on a website, a live website, and AutoGBT has taken the wheel. I'm doing absolutely nothing and AutoGPT is doing all of the SEO work right in front of us. 
So now it says, I've gathered all the information here. I want to create an outline based on the information gathered from the website and organize the info into sections. So let's see what it does and then let's see if it even revises that further. So there you go. It has spit out an outline, right? Here is the outline. We could push this to a Google Doc in a second, but it's asking me, what should I do next? It says, I want to review it, make sure it's good, but we can also ask it things. So let's say crawl three more websites and analyze, analyze them to ensure this is a comprehensive article outline. Let's see how it handles my request. So it said, okay, I understand what you ask. Let's go. And I've hit Y to do it. And it's doing it. It's doing it right in front of our eyes. It's gathering titles and portions of the body. Um, you can see the URLs here. This is live data, which is absolutely insane. When you combine an uh, open model like ChatGPT, whether or not it's 3.5 or 4, with the internet, the live internet, we have a whole different thing now. So it says, I've gathered the information. Let's keep rolling with it. I say, yes, let's do it. So it has created the article outline based upon two different websites. Now it wants to use the outline as a template to create the care guide. Let's just see how it does with this. So it did the intro right here, which reads, welcome to the Philadelphia District care guide. This guide is designed to provide you with all the information, blah, blah, blah. It wants to now talk about, please provide information on the light requirements for this plant. So it knows what it wants to write about. It doesn't have the information per se. So it's probably going to go out and grab the information and write about it which is totally different than what we're able to do right now with offline ChatGPT. So here you go. It wrote about the light requirements. Require bright, indirect light to thrive. Let's see how this does with originality. So we're loading. We pushed it in here and we're scanning it. It's 100% AI. Let's see how it is from plagiarism. It's not plagiarism. So that's good, but it's not passing AI tests, which hardly anything passes originality right now off of ChatGPT 3.5 or even 4 for that matter. So let's have some fun. Let's figure out how much did that little experiment cost us. So today is the 18th and I've used 27 cents in tokens. Now keep in mind, I did about four other experiments um, that you didn't see in this video prior to this. So we can assume, you know, 30 divided by four. This was a sub 10 cents idea that we just did. Not bad at all. So here is the alternative. If you want to have a less technical alternative to AutoGPT, this is your game. And in fact, I'm gonna use this more. So I'm gonna give you three prompts right now. I'm gonna type them into here. You're gonna see some incredible things in a second. And each prompt is better than the last. But I wanna go over some misinformation on this tool. Okay, you saw that AutoGPT can get online, right? You saw that. This cannot. I've seen YouTubers saying that it can, but it's merely a hallucination based upon old data. Look, it says this platform is currently in beta. We are currently working on web browsing, long-term memory, interaction with websites and people. It doesn't do it yet. So, guys, it doesn't go online yet. This one doesn't. So here we go. Let's just start it up. SEO agent is the name of the game. And let's say its goal is to provide the most relevant keywords using the bag of words algorithm theory for personal injury lawyer. What the heck does that mean? The bag of words algorithm theory. Well, let's see what this does and then we can talk about this. So it's saying retrieve a large data set of documents related to personal injury law, tokenize each document into individual words while removing stop words and special characters. So it wants just the keywords. Uh, implement the bag of words algorithm to determine the most relevant keywords based on their frequency. So the bag of words theory is a Kyle Roof thing. If you don't know that SEO, go Google him, go check him out on YouTube. It's pretty crazy what he's done or what he did a couple years back. But none of the retrieve a large data set. I'm not able to do this. Let's see, develop a web scraper. Can you develop a web scraper? Tokenize each document, task response, most relevant keywords for da da da. Implement the bag of words algorithm. Okay, very good. We're getting some things. Task complete. Here we go. These are, let's deploy or stop. All right, this is it. So what we're able to do here, let's take this, let's do file new. Look here. The bag of words theory is that Google looks at documents more or less. It says, look, this article has, has these keywords in this density. That means how many times does it have it? Um, so what this tool just did, it looked at old data, old website data, and it said regarding personal injury lawyer, these type of websites have these keywords in them often. 
There's tools that can also do this, but it takes more time on our part. We know that these have to be folded into the article if we're going to rank for personal injury lawyer. They have to be at specific spots in the document, but this is a good step for an SEO to say, look, if you have a writer, include these concepts, these words, include these words, these concepts into the article, we're going to rank higher uh, if we do. So what is the next step? What are we going to use this for, the SEO agent that we've created? Let's do another variant and let's, let's make it better than before. So this one here says the niche is personal injury lawyer. It says generate a well-formatted topic cluster. It's a pretty big um, prompt, quite frankly, but let's see what we can do. Here's the whole prompt. And like I said, if you're interested, just, just shoot something in the comments. Uh, generate a list of core topics and subtopics related to personal injury law. Keep in mind, this is a super competitive niche. We need every angle we can get. Provide recommendations for incorporating these keywords and phrases into the website. So let's see. Now we're going to stop it because it gave us something pretty darn good. Everyone's always talking about topic clusters, topic clusters, topic clusters. Well, it just created something pretty special for us. So generate a list of core topics. This is the query or the input. Subtopic one, types of personal injury cases. All of a sudden you have all the different types that are relevant. Look here, let's not zoom by this. Car accidents, auto accidents, truck and accidents. Very, very good. Subtopic, subtopic number two, legal process for personal. So file and acclaim statutes. It's all these things pertain to what we asked it to do. Compensation for it, damages, economic damages, punitive damages, amazing. This is crazy. Suggested keyword variants in related phrases. Tell me that prompt that we have up here is not amazing with com when combined with the agent GPT. It's faster than auto GPT. And it's saying to effectively incorporate these keywords and phrases, make sure to use them in a natural, natural way. You could give this to a writer and say, run, this is what you need. And it took us two seconds, right? Um, but what is an even better prompt? What can we use, right? Let's, let's talk about this. What could we use to, to be even better? And I'm actually gonna do something different. So we're in ChatGPT again. I'm going to use just ChatGPT. And I'm gonna create an insane prompt. I kinda happened upon this. Listen, I kinda, I got lucky, okay? This is a really, really good prompt. Um, check it out. So I ask it, use this as a template for blah, blah, blah. Um, it's pretty, I don't wanna read it right now, but let's just grab this and figure out what did we just do so here we go um, boom so core topic number one I asked it to create uh, an article cluster yet again I, I need something for my writers that are fast we know what to write about look core topic number one regarded the philodendron prince of orange what it is history physical description popular varieties uh, keywords and phrases um, the core topic number two Light requirements, water, da 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 da. We could do all kinds of things. What is your niche? We could, we could, let's just do a different niche. But look how crazy involved this is. Propagation, um, stem cuttings, division, air layering, keywords and phrases for that, preparing the cutting, subtopic number one. So those are three core topics. One, two, three. And then a subtopic number one, how to propagate it, right? It's just so good. It's so detailed. I happened to, I got lucky with this one. Um, yeah. And then it gives us old data on different keywords. That is a good chat GPT prompt, just straight up. So there you have it. Auto GPT, the real version, the easy version, and everything in between. If you liked the video, hit subscribe. And also, if you're interested in working together, I do help local businesses and huge national businesses with SEO. We're doing a master class as well, and we're creating an AI software to do content. It's called Quick Article Workflow. Check out the channel. Subscribe. Crawl through there. There's so much content. Anyways, I'll check you on the next one.